Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for attending today's webinar, Rules in a Microservices Architecture from Red Hat and Missouri. I'm now going to pass you off to Kent. Hello. My name is Kent Udy. I'm a technical director at Missouri. At Missouri, we're a Red Hat premier partner. Uh, we specialize in the JBoss middleware stack, OpenShift, and uh, lots of open source technologies. Today's webinar, we're going to take a look at rules in a microservices architecture. Microservices architecture. Let's first explore that. So what is microservices architecture? Microservices architecture is, is an approach of developing a single application as a suite of small applications, each running in its own process, communicating with lightweight mechanisms such as HTTP. Services that are built around these capabilities are independently deployable and fully automated through CI-CD processes. A guiding principle in most microservices applications are, are, is a principle known as 12-factor applications. Let's just review these briefly. So one code base is used for one microservice. Yes, dependencies are explicitly declared. This is because uh, you want to isolate your dependencies between your services. That's a pretty important. Um, your configuration is stored in the environment. Backing services such as databases are treated as attached resources, not really part of the application. You want to build, release, and run. Um, so this is that whole CI, CD that we're talking about. Processes execute um, in a stateless process. That's a very important concept. You want to remain stateless as possible. State is maintained by backend attached resources such as a database. Um, where your, your actual microservices try to remain stateless as much as possible. You expose your, these microservices through port bindings. You want to be able to handle concurrency. So you want to be able to scale these microservices independently. So, so that way uh, you can uh, scale out just the, the components that require a lot of resources. Disposability. Microservices should be able to be easily restarted and pick up where they left off. Um, they should start fast and, um, and allow for um, scale out. You, have, you want your environments to look as much uh, the same as possible. You want your dev, production, test environments all to look uh, very similar. Your logs should be um, input streams, so you should consolidate your logs and, uh, and use those in order to keep track of the entire uh, microservices application. Admin processes run as one-off tasks. So these are just some principles that I wanted to review just to kind of level set what a microservices architecture is and how we can apply business rules in this microservices architecture. Let's take a look at monolith versus microservices applications. Traditionally, we built our applications in a monolith pattern. That is, we built it as one deployable. That deployable could be a war or ear file that's packaged and deployed on an application server. So if we wanted to scale our application, we'd have to deploy another application server on another server and then redeploy that ear or war, scaling out the entire application. So there's no way to independently scale components of the application. In a microservices architecture, each component of the application is a small microservice that can be independently deployed and scaled. Let's take a look at some tools that facilitate a microservices architecture. The principles of microservices architecture aren't new. They're really just an extension of SOA that we've been doing for years. Microservices architecture just um, applies different principles, new principles to the same old SOA that we've been doing. Some tools have come around lately that have really made microservices a hot um, way of deploying and, and, and building applications. Some of these include the following. Spring Boot and Wildfly Swarm for Java applications is a, a, is a very clean way of packaging and deploying your RESTful service endpoints. Then containers are really the driving force behind microservices architecture. They allow you to package your application, your, your microservice application, in a small container that can be run um, on any platform that supports running the, the Docker engine. Container orchestration platforms allows us to scale these 
these Docker containers. Um, some common orchestration platforms include Kubernetes and um, Red Hat OpenShift. And then gluing all these pieces together are CI CD tools such as Jenkins and CloudBees. So now let's look at JBoss BRMS. BRMS is a comprehensive platform for business rules management. So it, it, is, it allows us to develop rules and then run those and execute those rules. The benefits of using a business rules platform instead of coding your, your, your rules in your code? Well, you're externalizing these rules from the application code. Uh, so now you have greater visibility into this code. Lots of people, or lots of managers, especially in IT, have a problem. They have code that's been around, and they may not have the same resources available that originally wrote the code. They don't know what that, those rules do. They don't have very good visibility into that, those rules. The business rules platform allow, um, allows us to externalize that code away from the actual application code and uh, gives us greater visibility. So we can write these rules in a more domain-specific language. So we, it's more of a natural language and that the business can talk as opposed to it being Java or JavaScript code. Uh, it allows us to test our rules independently from the application code. It, uh, we can make consistent and efficient decisions. We can quickly build resource-optimized solutions. It, it shortens our development life cycle because um, we can change these rules quicker and, and add additional rules a lot uh, faster than we used to do. It empowers business experts to manage and change rules directly. So this is one of the important pieces of this. So in, in traditional development where you're building code where your rules are, you may, you may have analysts that sit down with the business, and then they explain what their rules are, and then that gets translated into code. Well, business rules platform allows us to work directly and let the end users see the, the rules. Maybe they won't create the rules. They can, but they would participate in that a lot more than looking at code. Um, so we'll see that as we go along.